Hi, welcome to Always Growing. I'm Heidi. I'm Dave. On Always Growing, we grow in our marriages, uh, tiny steps each day. And so today we're going to talk about Christmas, which is maybe mm-hmm. funny. Yeah. <laughs> right now it's the end of July, right? But Christmas in July. Yay. Yay. Yeah. So we're going to talk about a passage in Luke 2, which is just the really classic Christmas passage. Um, And we're especially going to meet the shepherds and Mary, and we're going to apply this to our marriage, which is one thing that I believe in really strongly is that all of scripture applies, right? To our lives. To our marriages. We, Mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't like put it in that context, but I think it, it, I mean, marriage is so broad. I think you can fit those. You're not really fitting it in, but you're more like fitting your marriage into what the Bible is already telling you. So. Right. That's exactly it. And if you think about, I like to compare scripture to an onion. So the center is always about Jesus Christ and that he died and rose for us and brings us salvation and restoration. And then there's these other layers. So we're getting to one of those other layers today that has to do with our marriages. Um, there might be another layer of this passage that has to do with a relationship with someone else in your family or a friend or something else or your spiritual connection to God in a different way. Uh, So we're going to peel the onion and look at Luke 2 for marriage. And we're going to especially read Luke 2, 16 through 19. So if you have your Bibles, you can open it and look that up. Otherwise, I'm going to read it here. Luke 2, 16 through 19. And they, when it says they, they mean the shepherds. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Um, So, Dave, Mm -hmm. I think the first question is, what is Mary treasuring up? Like, what is she focused on here? What is she Mm -hmm. pondering? Well, yeah, I mean, the shepherds, you know, coming to Jesus and... I think later it will be the uh, the wise men or whatever, and those are these are some of the events like early on in Jesus' life, you know, as he's born, and so, you know, as Mary understands that he is like the Messiah, you know, I, I mm-hmm. think she understands that, right? Um, so, this is the very beginning of that, and what things are going to happen who knows but you know these are some cool things happening yeah it seems like from what Mm -hmm. you're saying like treasuring or pondering is really that connection of god is doing something here Mm -hmm. i may or may not understand it but i'm going to take a minute to reflect to ponder is what the bible says to focus on it to connect with god in it you know, that I'm yeah. going to stop and notice his presence, I guess, mm-hmm. for a minute. I think so often in life, we, we're we not stopping to noticing. Or mm-hmm. that, that sentence didn't make sense. We're not stopping to notice God or what he's doing in our lives. You know, we're just kind of going about our business and our everyday, uh, mm-hmm. especially... You can see then, as we talk, how this applies to marriage, I think. Mm-hmm. We're so often going about our mm-hmm. business each day. And I don't think it's, I mean, I think your focus tends to be on the things that are challenging and problematic. Mm-hmm. Um, not that you're being negative, but you're just kind of working on those things. And so mm-hmm. um, to, or even like, you know, it's a, it's like in prayer, like you are all constantly asking for things that you need, but then forgetting to rejoice in the things that have been given mm. to you mm-hmm. and your aunt, the answers to prayer and remembering like those, you know, times of, of great Thanksgiving for something awesome that's happening. Right, right. So what, what does Luke 2 have to do with marriage? It has to do with this idea of treasuring up. And then when you consider what treasuring up is, what kinds of things in our marriages can we treasure up? What kinds of things can we stop to notice, I guess, and stop to focus on a little bit instead of just kind of like running the train down the track or, yeah, Yeah. running the race or, like you said, focusing on trying to solve the problems all the time. So let's think about our own marriage, Dave. What kinds of things exist in our marriage that we can stop and treasure 
and ponder and thank God for for a second. Um, And maybe that'll help people who are watching kind of root out some of the things that they can stop in their marriage and treasure up for a minute and notice in the day to day instead of, you know, we're solving this, we're doing this, we're getting this person here, we're doing this thing over here. Mm -hmm. Anything that you have noticed before that you or in this season of our lives even that you want to treasure up a little bit? Um, (laughs) well, I mean, there's things with our kids that are happening, but, you know, I think we have been blessed. I think we've said this before to be able to have lunch together. Mm. Um, and then, and like ordinarily, like we might think, well, that's whatever, that's just normal part of life. But, Mm -hmm. you know, not everybody can do that. Most people can't probably. And Mm -hmm. so that's opportunity we have. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what else. Well, I think about, so I think that I like to treasure up the times when we really connect. Like when you have that moment where you're like, whoa, like I married this person and Mm -hmm. I still really like him. And I feel so much like love right now in this moment. Mm -hmm. Like, and I know that's not going to last. I know I'm going to be annoyed in 15 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. But like, I like to treasure up those moments where I'm like, I feel really connected to you. Um, Mm -hmm. whether it's a, a lot of times for us, it happens around like some theological conversations, like some (laughs) like kind of biblical insight or, or even, I think when we talk about, uh, nature, we've been watching a show about zoos (laughs) and like the background of like taking care of the animals at the zoo. And sometimes I think we both are like, Whoa, that's really cool. Did you see that? And those kind of moments, I just feel like are really connecting. Yeah. Uh, And so I treasure up when we kind of see the same insight or the same miraculous thing of god like happening in nature you know yeah right yeah it's kind of funny because even just like when i was thinking about watching that show i mean there was like this moment where the the fox dies and it's like it's not a good moment i mean it's terrible but we're like kind of crying together and yeah yeah sharing that experience together and it's like well i mean that's you know, that's something to be treasured. Yeah. That connection that we had and experience mm-hmm. that we had together. Ooh, that's you know. good. And that brings it to the article that I wrote about this Luke 2, what Luke 2 can teach us about our marriage, uh, which is available on the CPH blog. And I will also uh, put a link to it in the show notes. But in that, the way that I learned about kind of treasuring up in our marriage was not my idea. It was from friends of ours who had lost their baby. Like they had a stillborn mm. baby. And that's a really difficult, dark thing that happens in your marriage mm. that can pull, you know, pull at the marriage instead of bring it together. And they are the ones who uniquely reflected, uh, you know, I'm just trying to treasure up the moments of togetherness we have in this. I'm trying to treasure up what I'm learning about my Mm -hmm. family and my kids and and my Mm -hmm. spouse in this. And so I do think those tender moments that aren't always the happiest moments, uh, but those are things to be treasured up even more so. And Mm -hmm. I think we see that in Mary. There's no way the birth of Jesus was entirely pleasant. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's not, there's a cave involved and they're, they have to travel for days on end. They're tired. I'm sure. Um, Mm -hmm. the shepherds are the first visitors, uh, just so many weird, wonderful things at the birth of Jesus Mm -hmm. and hard things. So I think the treasuring is in, whoa, this amazing thing, the Messiah has come, and then the the details of that, how God works in that, the things you don't expect in that. Mm. And I think in marriage it's the same yeah. way. You yeah, it's kind of it. like you, when you just go through struggles, like if during the time of it, it's like, mm, this is super not fun, but then you kind of see like, the fruit of the not so great experience mm. and that brings you closer together in some way. Yeah. Um, no, and, that's I, and that's, that's something that you experience in that moment or you maybe like reflect on it. You're like, Oh yeah, that's right. And mm-hmm. to be able to look for those hidden things in the problems. Yeah. Yeah. It's treasure. So it's not always obvious. You know, I think mm-hmm. that's the definition of treasuring is that you're kind of digging for the, 
thing mm-hmm. buried in the field or the the mm-hmm. the x is on the map but you have to dig for it you mm-hmm. have to go in and put a little effort in for that um and before we close the other thing i wanted to reflect on with this is sometimes the treasuring happens after the fact like it doesn't like you were kind of just saying it mm-hmm. doesn't have to be in that moment Mm -hmm. Um, when you have a chance for reflection. So some seasons you don't really have a chance. Like you feel overwhelmed or you feel sad or you Mm -hmm. feel uh, just busy. Um, So sometimes later you can intentionally try to reflect too. And so I was struggling, for instance, the other day with um, some going back to school stuff, some pandemic stuff, some... Uh, changes in life and work and everything stuff. And one thing I was thinking about uh, in the midst of that struggle was this idea. Look how far we've come. <laughs> like I was thinking about other times in our life where I th- I thought we would, you know, kind of just cease to exist. Like I didn't, our marriage wasn't in a very good place. It wasn't very strong. Um and our family was hurting. And so to get to this place where we're, we're not there, that's really powerful. You know, we're no longer mm-hmm. there. We're here. And so I think sometimes it helps to reflect on, like, the resilience that's been built in your marriage and in your family, uh, the times you have worked together when you're not working together well or when you feel like you're suffering a little bit. Sometimes just going back to, like, what you've been through can be really mm-hmm. helpful to remember mm-hmm. that we can handle this season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you right. know, we got we've, this. <laughs> we've, we've had some some of those experiences before and sometimes they just pop up and you're like, oh yeah, that's right. We went through the same thing before and we got this. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and I think God's got this. You know, that's the whole point of treasuring in Luke 2. Like we know mm-hmm. we can't handle it alone. Mary wasn't trying to take on the world herself she was reflecting on the savior of the world come to take care of them that's really powerful in any marriage Mm -hmm. in any marriage all right so we want to hear what you're treasuring up in your marriage today and we want to hear uh what you've been through what has built some resilience and that you treasure up from the past in your marriage thanks for joining us we'll see you next time see ya